Now what this will let us do is use all the classes inside of locators to access um, those locators. So let's go to page. I just need to look at this documentation on the left side here to make sure we're not getting lost. So I'm going to say main page locators dot go button. So I want to find in sorry inside of here out to click the go button. What I want to do is find the element that is denoted by the locator that I put in the main page locators, right? So if we went back to locators, we see we have this locator here and inside a page, we're going to search by that. Now I need to add a little asterisk here. What this stands for is unpack. And essentially you can think of it like this. If I have a tuple that is one, two, if I unpack it, so I put the star in front of it. Some people also call this splat. Then what this will do is separate it into arguments. Uh, so rather than having this be one object as a tuple, it will separate it into two entities. So you can think of like if I didn't have the star, then what would go in here would be let me just copy this so I don't have to retype it a tuple one, two. But as soon as I put the star, what this actually translates to is one comma two. Now you might be like, well, how is that different? Well, these are two objects, whereas before it was one and it split that into two objects. So we can pass that as an argument to the find element. So that's the idea behind that. So let's go back to star main page locators. Again, it's called splat or unpack. Um, it's fairly useful actually thing in Python that's used quite often. Uh, so there we go. So that's the click go button. We have the locators imported. So from locator import star. Uh, and I think this one is actually getting pretty, pretty good. So now we're going to define another class, which is called search page. Oops, if we can type here, it's hard to type when I'm looking at the other screen. Search page, oh, search result page. I should type this correctly. Otherwise, this could be a mess. Okay, so search result page, and then we'll inherit from base page again, which means we're just going to use this initialization. And then inside of here, we're going to say define is underscore result underscore found self colon return the string and I'll talk about this after no results found period not in self dot driver dot page source uh, okay so I think that's right page source yep so what this is essentially saying is okay so we have this search page result class. This inherits from the base page. And what this is going to tell us is if any results are found uh, from the, the, the uh, source page. So essentially, if this string does not exist on that page in the HTML, then we will say this worked. That was good. Otherwise, uh, that'll be false, right? So that's the idea for the search result page. And I have a feeling these are templates because I don't think they use them. Uh, but anyways, that's the idea. Okay. So now that we have that, what we're actually going to do is go up and create something called element. So element is actually going to be very useful. Uh, and I'll probably try, try to do an example with this to show you what I mean. So from here, we're going to do at the top of this from selenium dot web driver dot support dot UI import web driver weight. Okay. So we're going to say class base page element. If we don't have that in capitals, We'll inherit from object. And what this file is going to do is actually represent one element on the page. So for example, it will represent the search bar. It will re represent a form input. Uh, and the idea behind this is that it's going to be really easy to access and change elements if we have kind of one interface to do that. And that's what we're defining here. So we're defining a base page element uh, and this is what's going to be used for all other elements. And I, I kind of just have to write this first and then I will really explain why this is useful. We're going to say define set self object value. Now notice this has two underscores. So underscore, underscore, set, underscore, underscore. We'll talk about what that means, but this is called a dunder method. It's actually a part of the Python data model, which is an advanced aspect of Python. Uh, and then we're going to say web driver wait, and I'll talk about this again, driver a hundred dot until lambda driver colon driver dot find underscore element underscore by underscore name self dot locator. Okay. So we have that web driver. Wait, let me make sure I typed that correctly. Okay. And then driver dot find element by name self dot locator. We'll talk about what the locator is in a second dot sorry dot clear. 
and we're going to copy the same thing, but send keys. Now the syntax should look fairly familiar except for the Lambda. Uh, so we'll talk about that in a second, but element by I, by name dot send underscore keys value. Okay. So what this is saying is when we have some element on the page, if we want to set its value, so we want to set, um, you know, what it's equal to. So say that that search box, we want to set it. Well, what we need to do is always follow this process. So for any element that we want to set the value for, we're going to do that by following this process. We're going to have the driver, which is equal to the object dot driver. Now I know you don't know what object stands for yet, but you'll see what that is in a second. That's going to be equal to the, it, it's hard to explain because it's an advanced Python concept, but once we go to the other page, I'll, I'll show you, but essentially this will be the web driver. That's what it is. And then we're going to say web driver wait. So with the web driver up to hundred seconds until this function is true. So until we're able to run this, so this is a function Lambda stands for anonymous function. Uh, so Lambda with the argument driver driver dot find element by name self dot locate. Now self dot locator will be equal to the name that we want to use to locate the element. Now we haven't defined one yet, but what we could do is say locator, right? Equals locator. If I could spell this correctly, spelling is off today. If we do locator equals Q or something, then what this will do is say, we're going to find the element with the name Q. And then we're going to say driver dot find element by name self dot locator. So again, that same locator dot clear. So clear that input field so that it's empty and that we can now type into it and we'll send whatever value is passed here to that. Now I know this is confusing. You have to promise me that I'm going to explain this, uh, but it's you, we have to do it kind of part by part. So that's the first one. Now the next one's going to be get. So let's say we want to get the value of an object, right? Well, what we had to do before, if I go back to tutorial one, uh, was we had to do that wait, we had to do the implicitly wait. So what this element page is saying for us is don't worry about waiting anymore. We'll set up this base object that will anytime we try to access or change a value automatically implement this functionality. So this will kind of be hidden behind the scenes, but what it will do is make it so that any new element we want to access, we no longer have to wait for that element. We can just use this base class uh, to implement that functionality. So that's the idea. Uh, but here we're going to say object owner like that. And then we're going to say driver equals object dot driver web driver. Wait, this is pretty much the exact same thing for the first two lines. So I'm going to copy that. And then what it has here is element equals driver dot find element by name, self dot locator, and then return element dot get underscore attribute value. Okay. So now what this is saying is, all right, so if we want to access the value of an attribute, what we're going to do is, or not an attribute of an element, my bad, uh, is we're going to say the web driver is equal to the web driver. Let's wait for that element to exist on the page. And then let's say that element is equal to the driver dot find element by name locator, right? And then element dot get attribute value. Now there's other ways to do this, but what this is saying is, you know, get the attribute from this HTML field of value and return that. So hopefully this makes sense. This is setting the value. This is getting the value and these will be used for every object from now on um, so that we don't need to implement this every time. We've just written this once. And now if we go to page.py, we can simply import this. So we can say from element import uh, base page element like that. So now let's say there's an element on the page we want to access. Well, what I can do is make a class. I can say class. And I'm just going to use the example that they have here, which is search text elements like that. This will inherit from base page element like that. And then we'll simply define the locator that we want to use to locate this. So now all I have to do is for each element that I want to locate on the page and be able to manipulate, define some class that names the element, whatever I want and set a locator. So let's say we want to locate the go button, right? Well, assuming that go button had the name, I mean, this is a bad way to do it just because we've already done that, but we could say locator equals, you know, go like imagine that was the go button uh, name. And then here our class would be go button element. And now if we want to access the value, if we want to change the value, I mean, it doesn't work for that obviously, cause it's a button, but if it was like a field or something, 
we wouldn't have to implement any of this functionality because it's already here and we've just inherited it from the base page element. So again, this is, I know it's a lot, this is this is difficult coding, uh, especially from Selenium. I wouldn't, I was not expecting them to make it this complicated, uh, but I'm trying my best to explain this as clear as possible. So search text element is just equal to that search box because now we've found the locator Q. And if I go back to Python here and we hit inspect on the search box, notice that the ID name is Q, right? So name is Q. So what it's saying is let's find the element Q and then since we have element defined here, we can set it and send keys to it uh, by calling the set method and calling the get method. Now those are underscored for a reason. We'll talk about that in a second, uh, but let's go to main page here and let's define something as a attribute. So we're going to say search underscore text underscore element is equal to search text element. Okay, so I've defined this here. Now what this is actually is doing is creating what's called a descriptor. Now, the idea behind this is you want to hide the functionality of a specific attribute. So you do something like what we've done here. Now, this is obviously a complex example, but the idea being that every time we access this variable search text element, we decide to change it or we decide to get the value from it. What it's going to do is use this set and use this get. So if I had, you know, search, uh, I don't want to type all this out, search text elements like that, and I set it equal to five. So we, we had defined it in the other class, but you know, say we set it equal to five. What actually happens behind the scenes is the class that this is defined in, which I believe is, where is it here? So main page is passed to the set as object and five is passed as value. So what this does now is says object.driver, which is equal to this main page, which has a driver because that's from the base page initialization, right? And then the value is the argument here, which is five. So it says, okay, we'll take the driver. The locator is defined already inside of this object, right? Right here. And then what we'll do is send the key value. So if I set this five, it will send the key five. And that's the idea behind this. You know, if I set it equal to five, it will just send the value of five. And if I set the keys like hello, and actually five, sorry, would have had to be been in a string. But anyways, uh, if I set the value hello, it will send the value hello and input that into the search field. Now, if I do something like X equals search text element, what will happen now is we'll call the get method and it will say, OK, the object will be equal to the object before. And actually, I'm, I don't really know what the owner is supposed to be equal to. I mean, we could print it out if we want. I'm pretty sure the owner will be equal to something to do with the classes uh, or maybe actually this variable name here. That That's possibly the answer. Uh, but anyways, what it will do is since we have the object, it will get the driver. It will wait until we find that element. Then what it will do is return the value of that to X. So when we say search text element, really what we're saying is call this get method. Uh, and that's pretty much how that works. So that's the descriptor. This is an advanced Python feature, very advanced feature. So don't feel you know, bad if you're confused, uh, but that's pretty much how that's working. And I, I kind of need to explain that because I feel bad, you know, just skipping through it uh, and not explaining what really is happening there. So that's the idea behind that. So I think actually, if I'm looking here, we've pretty much finished this, this, uh, this first page here for page.py. Elements looks good. Locators looks good. So now let's go back to the main page because there's actually something I wanted to add on the main page. So we go to main page, main.py. Let me just make sure all of these are saved here. What we'll do now is we're going to actually make another test case. So we'll keep test title like that. We're going to say define. I'm going a little bit different than the documentation now. Test underscore search underscore uh, Python or something. Okay. So now we're going to say self like that colon. And now what we're actually going to do, um, hmm, this might be a little bit confusing, uh, is say, okay, uh, I'm actually going to move this around a bit. So let's get rid of this just because I've seen the way they've done this and it, and it makes sense. So let's go define test search Python. We'll say main main page equals page dot main page. So remember that's accessing this class right here, which inherits from this. So let's go back here and we're going to assert that main page uh, dot is title match. So that will call that method from main page, which says is Python in driver dot type. All right, sweet. Now we're going to put a comma. Now what comma stands for is do these operations um, afterwards, uh, essentially is what it's saying. And then we can assert something afterwards. So we'll assert this um, and assuming that's true, do this. So now we're going to say main page 
dot search text element, which is equal to what we defined here, which is that descriptor, which implements the get set functionality. It's equal to that. So or, sorry, dot that is equal to PyCon. So when we pass PyCon, again, it's going to go through and call set with value equal PyCon and set that attribute. So main page dot search text element equals PyCon. And then we'll say main page like that dot click go button. Okay, nice. Now we'll say search result. So search result page search underscore result underscore page. I really am having trouble typing today is going to be equal to page dot search page result or search result page uh, self dot drive. Okay, so this makes sense. Now. So self dot driver. And then what we're going to do after here and these sorry should all do they all need commas after them? Actually, I don't believe they do. No, we're going to say assert search result page dot is result. Value. Okay, so let's let's digest this now. So what's happening is we're going to load the main page. We're going to say assert main page dot is title matches. Now, I feel like this comma might be an error because I don't think the comma should be there, although I might be a little bit confused. But anyways, the comma is going there. Uh, and then what we're going to say after we check if this is true or not is main page dot search text element equals PyCon. So search text element is equal to the element. We've talked about that. Then we're going to click the go button to search for that. And then we're going to say the search result page is equal to page dot search result page self dot driver. OK, so we initialize a new search result page, which is equal to if we go to the page dot pi this right, which now influence this method return no results found in uh, not in self dot driver dot page source. Awesome. So we go back here, then that will just tell us essentially if we found any results by searching for the value PyCon. That is how this works. And that is pretty much uh, the test framework. So let's run this. And we got a value, we got an issue. I think it is the comma actually. Yeah, so I don't know why they had a comma there in the documentation. I was confused by that as well. But anyways, let's get rid of the comma and let's run this. So setup, boom, runs here, failed, errors equals one. So let's see what the error is here. Missing one required potential argument, uh, positional argument driver. So sorry, that's my bad guys. We need to add self.driver into here. So page equals main.page self.driver. So we'll add that and run this here. So setup. Give it a second, see if I made any other syntax errors. Notice it searched PyCon, ran, and then it said the test was OK. So that is how that works. Now, I mean, we don't need to close it if we want to see the results, but this is how you set up the unit test framework. Again, confusing, I agree. But hopefully this video helped you somewhat understand how this works. Now, of course, you don't need to set up your test as robust as this. But this is very good practice. And notice how easy it is for me to really go and find anything that I need. Let's say the name changes for that search text element. All I need to do is change the locator here. Boom, script works totally fine. Let's say that we want to add some other method or some new thing to test. OK, I want to test a separate functionality. Well, what I can do is I can you know, add another search statement in here if I want, or I can just make a new method and go ahead and test that. OK, we move from this, the main page to the search page. Let's make a new search page object. There we go. That's all we need to do. I want to change the value of a field. Boom. That's all I need to do. Search text element. I don't need to do that. Wait, find, set, send keys. I can just access it directly because of that implementation that we did. Locator changes. No problem. I can go ahead and change it in here. So that is pretty much how you do the unit test framework for Selenium. Again, I'm sure I've probably lost most of you by now because this is a get very complex syntax, but hopefully this helped you uh, understand how this works. So with that being said, I'm going to leave the video at that. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in another Python video.